In this video, we're going to be looking at the question of finding the area enclosed by um, a parametric curve that's given by some parametric equations. So this um, and our next several videos will be on more of the um, Calc 2 type applications of our parametric equations in calculus, whereas our first couple of videos were more like Calc 1 applications of the derivative to our parametric equations. So here I'm interested in finding the area between a parametric curve and the x-axis. Okay, so let's say that our parametric curve here is given by the parametric equations x equals f of t and y equals g of t. Okay where let's say t, our parameter, varies between alpha and beta. Okay, So what we know about finding area in general for um, just a regular curve in the xy plane is we would look at the integral of the function with respect to x. So the um, area between a curve and the x-axis would be an integral from a to b of y dx. But I actually want this in terms of t. I want a parametric form of this. We'll notice that y is equal to g of t. So I can have an integral here of g of t. dx would be f prime of t dt. So I'll have f prime of t dt here. And then um, alpha and beta would be the corresponding um, t parameters to our a and our b. Okay, so when, um, let's see, we'd say that f of, um, or excuse me, a would equal f of alpha and b would equal f of beta. Okay, to convert between our x bounds here and t bounds. So this is the idea of um, the formula that we'll be using for finding the area between a parametric curve and the x-axis okay, in terms of our parameter t. So let's look at our first example here. I want to find the area enclosed by the x-axis and the curve x equals 1 plus e to the t, y equals t minus t squared. So couple things that I want to know. I want to know where does my curve actually intersect the x-axis to help me figure out what bounds I should use. So where does our curve intersect the x-axis? Well that'll be when y is equal to 0. So where is y 0 here? Well that will happen when 0 is equal to t minus t squared. Okay, or 0 is equal to t times 1 minus t. So that's when t is 0 or 1. And notice that these t values here correspond to the following x components. So I can say that x of 0 is equal to 1 plus e to the 0, which would be equal to 2. And if I look at x of 1 here, And if I look at x of 1, I find that x of 1 is equal to 1 plus e. Okay, So we could say that the area that we're interested in is going to be an integral from 2 to 1 plus e, Okay, 1 plus e being bigger than 2, of y dx, which will correspond to our integral from 0 to 1 of our y, which is t minus t squared and then our dx, which would be e to the t dt. Okay, So this is our setup, and now we have to think about um, integration techniques. So we get to review our various integration techniques to be able to compute um, the, this particular integral here. Okay, Well, what kind of technique are we going to use? Notice that I do have an algebraic type term here, some kind of powers of t, and I have an exponential function. So if we think back to our different um, integration techniques, 
when I had a product of two different kinds of functions, this is where I wanted to use my integration by parts. Okay, so this allows us to do some review, which is good as we come closer to the final exam. So I want to use integration by parts. Remember with our um, ILATE guideline, I would prioritize for you the algebraic thing over the exponential type function. So I'm going to let u be equal to t minus t squared and dv be e to the t dt. So my v is e to the t and du is 1 minus 2t dt. Okay, so what are we going to have from this? Well, this will be equal to our uv. So we'll have t minus t squared e to the t evaluated from 0 to 1 minus our integral of v times du, 1 minus 2t dt, again from 0 to 1. Okay. Well, notice that again I have a product of some sort of algebraic thing. This is a constant minus this power of t. Um, and then I also have this exponential type term. So I want to use integration by parts again. Remember we often looked at cases where we had to use integration by parts more than once. We sort of know that we're going to have to use it more than once because I do have a t squared term here. So I should have to do it just twice. So I'm going to let u be 1 minus 2t, dv be e to the t dt. So our v will be e to the t, and du will be negative 2 dt. Okay, so let's see where that brings us. So we still have our t, uh, t minus t squared e to the t from 0 to 1. We can go ahead and evaluate this. Notice that when I plug in 1, this is just going to be 0. Okay, so I'll have 0 here minus what happens when I plug in 0. Well, that'll also be 0. Okay, notice that it's 0 when I plug in 1 because I have 1 minus 1 squared times e. And then, of course, I'm plugging in 0, so I have 0 times this e to the 0. Okay, well, now I have to apply integration by parts to this, but I have that minus sign on the outside, so I need to remember I'm going to have to distribute that. So I'm going to have my uv. So that will be my 1 minus 2t e to the t evaluated from 0 to 1 minus my integral of v du. So that's e to the t times negative 2 dt again from 0 to 1. Okay, so we have this negative sign. We can go ahead and do my um, evaluation here of this part. So if we plug in 1, we'll have 1 minus 2 or negative e. Okay. Minus what happens when we plug in 0, I'll have 1 minus 0 or 1 times e to the 0, which is 1. So I get this negative e minus 1. Notice that I have a minus and negative here, so I can make that plus 2 times just the integral of e to the t, which is just e to the t. And that will be evaluated from 0 to 1. Okay, so we're almost done with this. I've got negative e minus 1 plus 2. Let's see, this is going to be from 0 to 1, so this will be 2e minus 2e to the 0, e to the 0 is 1, so we'll have minus 2. Alright, so notice that this will be just an e, and then I have a minus 3. Okay, so we end up with 3 minus e. So that's our final answer here, that we found that the area of that particular region enclosed between this curve of x plus uh, x equals 1 plus e to the t and y equals t minus t squared on the x-axis, we get this area of 3 minus e. Okay, so let's look at just one more example. And I guess I can draw a quick sketch. It turns out that this one does something like this here. So we found this, this area in, in example 4. So what about this next example? So I want to use parametric equations for an ellipse centered at the origin. So my parametric equations are x equals a cosine theta and y equals b sine theta, where theta ranges between 0 and 2 pi, to find the area it encloses. Okay, so let's give a quick sketch of our ellipse. So we're told that this is an ellipse centered at the origin. I could also go ahead and convert this to um, a Cartesian equation to help me picture it. 
I notice that since sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1, I could say x over a squared plus y over b squared is equal to 1. Okay, So I know this is an ellipse centered at the origin that's going um, away from the origin horizontally a units and vertically b units. Okay, I don't know if how a and b compare to each other here. We're just trying to give a sketch for us to help think about what we're doing here. So here's our ellipse. Okay. Now it will be helpful to us, let me correct this slightly here, to use some symmetry in answering this question. So I want to say what is the area inside that whole ellipse, but it will be far easier to talk about finding the area of a quarter of the ellipse and then multiplying that by four. So keep in mind that you always want to use symmetry when answering some of these application questions um, when possible, because that'll always simplify your work for you. So here, I notice that just my area in terms of an integral with respect to x would be four times the integral from zero to a of y dx, okay? But here I can replace y with my equation for y in terms of theta, my parametric form. So this is b sine theta. And my dx would be the derivative of a cosine theta here. So I'm going to have negative a sine theta d theta. Okay. Then I just need to figure out what the parameters are for my bounds. So notice that when x is equal to 0, I would have 0 equals a cosine theta or 0 equals cosine theta. So I need to figure out the theta value between 0 and 2 pi, where I will get um, cosine is equal to 0. Well, let's see. We know that cosine will be 0 at pi over 2 and at 3 pi over 2. Okay, um, But we are in the first quadrant here. So notice that at pi over 2, that would correspond to the point 0 comma y of pi over 2, which would be the point b. Okay, so that's exactly this point here. So this is theta equals pi over 2. Okay, so I'm going to have pi over 2 as my lower bound here. When x equals a, okay, I would have a equals a cosine theta. So that would be 1 equals cosine theta. And we know cosine theta is equal to 1 um, when theta is 0, and then again at 2 pi, when we would come back to the beginning. So it looks like this point here, again, I can plug in um, this theta value into uh, for theta here for x and y. I notice that x of 0 would be equal to a, y of 0 would be 0. So that's this point here. This is theta equals 0. Okay. So it looks like this particular um, ellipse here is being traced out in a um, counterclockwise here direction. Okay, so let's see how that affects what we're working with. Okay, traced out counterclockwise. So I'm going to have my bounds here go from pi over 2 to 0. So we're just trying to be a little bit careful here. Even though the x bounds here would go from 0 to a, I have to consider what parameters go with 0 and what parameters go with a. That ends up being from pi over 2 to 0. So if you wanted to switch the order of our bounds here, we know we'd have to multiply this by a negative. Well, I already have a negative here, so this can become positive 0 to pi over 2. Um, I can pull out those constants, so I have 4ab times this integral, and then I'm going to have sine squared theta d theta. So here we get another chance to um, recall our various integration techniques. Here I'm trying to integrate just an even power of our sine function. So um, remember that when we had the even power of sine, by itself, okay, we would use the half angle identity. 
Okay, so remember that the half angle identity said that sine squared theta was equal to 1 minus cosine 2 theta all over 2. Okay, so we'll replace sine squared with that identity. So I'll have this 4ab, the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of 1 minus cosine 2 theta all over 2 d theta. Okay, so we can um, pull that 1 half out in front. So we have 2ab, the integral from 0 to pi over 2, 1 minus cosine 2 theta d theta. And then we can take our antiderivative. So we'll have theta here minus sine 2 theta over 2, and we're evaluating this from 0 to pi over 2. So we're almost done. So we can go ahead and plug in our bound. So we're going to have pi over 2 minus, this will become sine of pi, which is 0. And then we'll have what happens when we plug in 0. So we'll get the 0 minus 0, since sine of 0 is 0. Okay. So this is just 2ab times pi over 2. The 2's cancel. So we get ab times pi for our final answer for the area of an ellipse centered at the origin um, that's extending out a units horizontally and b units vertically. Um, one thing that's interesting to note here is remember that um, a circle happens in the situation that a and b are equal to each other um, and are equal to the radius. So if a and b were both r here, this would be pi r squared. Okay, so this generalizes our um, formula for the area of a circle. So now we have a formula for the area of an ellipse. Let me know if you have any questions on these examples.